2016 Formula 1 season look like if Mercedes were not there? Round 1 has ever taxed us to the Australian Grand Prix, the classic season opener for Formula 1 and Sebastian Vettel has a brilliant start to the season. In his second season with Ferrari he ends up taking pole position for this Grand Prix and he's able to translate that pole position into a race victory ahead of his former teammate Daniel Ricciardo getting a podium at his home event. The Australian boy on the podium at the Australian Grand Prix but it's Felipe Massa, former Ferrari driver who ends up rounding off the podium in this opening race of the season, giving Williams a very, very good start to the season. But further in the grid, while Fernando Alonso still has his accident with Esteban Gutierrez, Julian Palmer scores points in his first ever race in Formula 1 with a P9 finish. And elsewhere, Roman Grosjean in Haas's first ever race in Formula 1 is finishing in P4. Round 2 and it's off to the Middle East for the Bahrain Grand Prix and Sebastian Vettel makes it back to back pole positions at the start of this season as he takes pole position for the Grand Prix. However, he still ends up pulling over with his failure on the formation lap. And it's his teammate who ends up benefiting from that as Kimi Raikkonen goes on to take the race victory ahead of Daniel Ricciardo once again, finishing in second place. So I'm a very, very consistent start to this season. But in third place, you thought Haas had a good season opener. Well, it gets even better in round two as Roman Grosjean finds himself standing on the podium in only Haas's second race in Formula 1. Brand new team, they're already on the bloody podium. Round 3 tech Formula 1 off to Shanghai for the Chinese Grand Prix where Daniel Ricciardo, after finishing second twice in a row, he ends up taking pole position for round 3. That pole position is not translated into a race win, it ends up being P3. Well, it ends up being his teammate Danny Kvyat, aka the Torpedo, finishing up in second place ahead of him for a Red Bull 2-3 while Sebastian Vettel, he, he was one, he's DNS, and now he's won again as he takes the race victory for this third round of the season. After we pop new to Russia for the fourth race of the season at the Sochi Autodrome and it ends up being Sebastian Vettel going quickest in qualifying however he does not start from pole position for the Grand Prix due to having a grid penalty to serve and the pole position P1 slot ends up getting handed to Valtteri Bottas in the Williams car taking the pole position for the Grand Prix. That P1 start ends up serving him quite nicely a lot better than Sebastian Vettel's P6 starting place as he ends up getting torpedoed in the opening corners by Danny Kvyat still. However although Bottas had pole position it does not end up in a race victory for him. The race victory ends up going the way of Kimi Raikkonen actually, the other Ferrari in the race. Kimi taking full opportunity of his teammates Wolves to take a race victory. His second race win of the season, Ferrari really dominating the race wins this season, but Baltas turns pole position into a second place finish ahead of his teammate for a Williams 2-3 finish. Round 5 now and it's off to Barcelona for the Spanish Grand Prix. We can really just gloss over this really? Because it's practically unchanged. The only difference is the Mercedes aren't there to play freaking wreck fest at turn 4. Danny Kvyat and Max Verstappen still end up swapping seats. Max Verstappen is poltered up to the Red Bull team. He takes the race victory while Daniel Ricciardo has to sell for fourth after starting on pole position. Kimi Raikkonen is in second and Sebastian Vettel is in third. Five rounds in and let's have a period look at how the championship is currently shaping up. Kimi Raikkonen, the 2007 world champion, currently finds himself in the championship lead on 80 points. Meanwhile, for second and third, it is a tie between Vettel and Ricciardo. Sebastian Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo both sitting on 65 points, but Vettel is ahead on count back in second while Ricardo has to settle for third place. Fourth place is currently going the way of Felipe Massa on 52 points while fifth place is currently Max Verstappen who's um, bolstered himself up quite a bit higher after that race win at round five for the Spanish Grand Prix. He's rounding off the top five. P6 in the standings is going the way of Valtteri Bottas on 46 points. P7 is currently Roman Grosjean on, on 35 points. 29 points is going the way of Danny Kvyat on in eighth place. Ninth place currently sits Carlos Sainz and the other Toro Rosso on 21 points while the top 10 is being currently rounded off by Sergio Perez in for the Force India team on 14 points. And now in the constructor standings is currently Ferrari leading the way on 145 points but Red Bull aren't a million miles behind them. There's a bit of a gap back but it's not a massive gap as the Red Bull are in second on 118 points. Third is currently going the way of Williams on 98 points while the top five is being rounded off by Toro Rosso on 46 points and Haas who is sitting on 35 points in fifth place. Sixth place is currently Force India on 24 points while just one point behind them you'll find Mc the McLaren team on 23 points. Eighth place is currently Renault on 15 points while Sauber are on one point in ninth and then Manor are yet to get off the ground in the point scoring as they're intent on zero. Round six is off to the streets of Monte Carlo for the Monaco Grand Prix. Daniel Ricciardo the weekend goes a hell of a lot better than it actually did because well he still has pole position and he does not lose the race lead to a Mercedes from his effed up pit stop. The pit stop would probably still be effed up but he wouldn't be losing a place to Lewis Hamilton. Daniel Ricciardo would go 
on to get his first win of the season and his first ever Monaco Grand Prix victory. Ahead of Sergio Perez, who will be finishing in second place. He's very, very good on street circuits. And he's proven that here in Monaco this afternoon as he finishes second ahead of Sebastian Vettel, finishing up in the third place. From Monaco, we make a quick trip across the pond to the Canadian Grand Prix in Montreal, Canada. Sebastian Vettel absolutely loves this circuit. He goes very well here and that absolutely continues this weekend as it's a hat trick for him of pole position, fastest lap, not that you get fastest lap points at this point in Formula 1 and it's also a race victory for him he absolutely loves this circuit Valtteri Bottas also goes quite well here this weekend as well as he finishes up in second place while Max Verstappen ends up rounding off the podium bouncing back after his tricky weekend in Monaco. And now we fly right back in the other direction to Azerbaijan for the European Grand Prix. Yes, the European Grand Prix, not the Azerbaijan Grand Prix. Wasn't known as that yet, but it's the streets of Baku for the first ever time in Formula 1. Sergio Perez, a man who tends to go very, very nicely around the streets of Azerbaijan. He finds himself quickest in qualifying. However, like Vettel in Russia, he has a grid penalty to serve and it ends up being Daniel Ricciardo starting first though. However, despite the grid penalty, Perez still manages to come back for podium finishes he finishes up in second place in this race ahead of Kimi Raikkonen who finishes third but in first place it ends up being Sebastian Vettel taking his fourth race win of the season while Daniel Ricciardo finds himself slipping backwards to fifth place uh, while Felipe Nazar gets his first points of the season on the board. From a street circuit it's off to a permanent facility to the Red Bull ring for the Austrian Grand Prix or well I'm partly convinced we should maybe just call it the Verstappen ring because he tends to go very very nicely around this circuit. He continues to this weekend but in qualifying he doesn't quite go as well as Nico Hulkenberg who finds himself on pole position for the second time in his Formula 1 career. Uh, that ends up in a DNF for him in the main race however unfortunately for him still no podium yet uh, but Max Verstappen takes full advantage and he ends up taking his second race win in Formula 1 around a track that he would go on to go very very nicely around. Well second place ends up being Kimi Raikkonen the same P2 man from Verstappen's first win and Daniel Ricciardo ends up rounding off the podium to make it a Red Bull 2 three. Meanwhile, further down the grid, Pascal Verlein ends up scoring his first ever points in Formula 1 with a P8 finish. Nine rounds in, championship standings now, and Sebastian Vettel has taken the lead of the championship from his teammate. Vettel now sits on 130 points. However, behind him, it's still a tie behind him. But now, between Kimi Raikkonen and Daniel Ricciardo, 125 points apiece, but Raikkonen is ahead on count back on that one. Fourth place is now Max Verstappen on 97 points, while the top five is being rounded off by Valtteri Bottas on 83 points. Sixth place is currently going the way of Felipe Massa in the other Williams car on 60 points, while well, seventh is six points back from him, and you'll find Sergio Perez on 54 points. Eighth place is currently Roman Grosjean on 45 points, while well, just two points back from that, you'll find Carlos Sainz on 43 points in ninth, while on 34 points, rounding off the top 10, is Nico Hulkenberg. Constructor standings now, and it's still Ferrari leading the way on 255 points ahead of Red Bull on 226. Third place is still, still Williams on 143 points, while the top five is currently rounded off by Force India on 88 points and then Toro Rosso on 69 points. In 6th place you'll find McLaren on 55 points while Haas have slid backwards to 7th place on 49 points and then the bottom 3 it's still the same bottom 3 roughly as it's still Renault in 8th place on 16 points uh, whilst Manor have jumped ahead of Sauber at the bottom of the table on 4 points up in the ninth place while Sauber are currently sat on 2 points in 10th. The home of British Motorsport is up next for the British Grand Prix and Max Verstappen can continues the form he had in Austria here at Silverstone as he takes his first ever pole position in Formula 1, becoming Formula 1's youngest ever pole sitter at just 18 years old. And he managed to, to carry that momentum through the Grand Prix and translate it into a race victory ahead of his teammates to make it a Red Bull 1-2 finish. Well, it's Kimi Raikkonen who ends up rounding off the podium in third place. You may think, yeah, championship-wise, the Red Bulls might swap the cars around, but given Ricardo Ricardo was already outscoring his rivals. I don't really think they would. In fact, Ricardo would take the championship lead at this point. The Hungarian Grand Prix is up next and Daniel Ricardo carries his momentum from finishing second place in Silverstone to taking pole position for the Hungarian Grand Prix venue where he won at two years previous in 2014 and he wins it here again today in 2016 as he goes on to convert pole position into a race win ahead of Sebastian Vettel in second and Max Verstappen ends up rounding off the podium in third place. Up next 
that's this off to Hockenheim. For the German Grand Prix, the home race of Sebastian Vettel, however, he would not find himself on pole position. That would be his former teammate. Daniel Ricciardo is going on a heck of a run right now of form. And that form does not die down as he ends up taking not only fastest lap in the Grand Prix, but also the race victory as he continues his um, run of podiums. Four podiums in a row from now, two victories in a row. And Sebastian Vettel has to settle for third place behind Max Verstappen. Another Red Bull 1-2 this season. Everyone goes off and takes a break for a few weeks, but when they return after the summer break from wherever the hell they went, it's the Belgian Grand Prix at spa Francochamps, And it ends up being the half-Belgian driver, Max Verstappen, taking pole position for this Grand Prix. However, it ends up being Daniel Ricciardo actually taking the victory as Max Verstappen ends up slipping backwards and finishing in ninth place. Daniel Ricciardo takes advantage of the bit of a melee at turn one between the between Verstappen and the Ferraris to take the race victory. Well, it ends up being Nico Hulkenberg getting a podium in Formula One ahead of Sergio Perez finishing up in third place. The Force India is having a very, very good race here at Spa. From Spa, it's off to Monza. The Temple of Speed, the home of Ferrari, Italy. And well, Ferrari have the perfect weekend. They have a front row lockout in qualifying. They start 1-2 with Sebastian Vettel claiming pole position for the Italian Grand Prix <clears throat> and Kimi Raikkonen alongside him and they finish that order on the podium. And Sebastian Vettel ends Ferrari's winless drought at Monza with a race victory and Kimi Raikkonen rounds off the top two for Ferrari 1-2 at Monza and Daniel Ricciardo ends up rounding off the podium in third. Absolute delight for the Tifosi. Standings now and it's Daniel Ricciardo now leading the Drivers' Championship on 233 points while Sebastian Vettel has fallen back to second place on 206 points. This championship battle really has come out to be Vettel or Ricardo now in this championship fight is there's a bit of a gap back to third place with Kimi Raikkonen on 188. Okay it's not a massive gap but it's a gap nonetheless but fourth place isn't that far behind Raikkonen. He kind of has his own battle to worry about against Verstappen in fourth on 167 points. The top five is currently being rounded off by Valtteri Bottas on 115 points while Sergio Perez is on 95 points in sixth place. Seventh is going the way of Nico Hulk on 80 points, while well, well, 8th is Felipe Massa on 72 points. And 9th you'll find Carlos Sainz on 59 points, while well, 10th is currently Fernando Alonso on 48 points. Drivers' Championship and Red Bull are now leading the Drivers' Championship on 404 points. They're only 10 points ahead of Ferrari on 394. Much like how the Drivers' Championship has kind of been established of Ricardo v Vettel, it is now really established now of Red Bull v Ferrari for this Drivers' Championship because there's a bit of a gap back to Will Williams in third, there's a massive gap back actually, on 187 points. Well, they have Force India to worry about, 175 points in fourth place. It's a massive gap back to fifth place though, where you'll find Toro Rosso on 89 points, but only three back points back further, you'll find McLaren on 86 points. Haas are still in seventh place on 54 points, while Renault are on 17 points, and then it's still four points for Manor and then two points for Sauber. From Italy, it's off to Singapore, another circuit where Vettel has been very, very strong at throughout his time and a race that Vettel won at in 2015. He would not win this time out. He wouldn't even be on pole position. The pole position would instead go the way of Daniel Ricciardo and so would the race win actually. Ricciardo claiming the race victory getting back on the top step of the podium after missing the top top step of the podium in Monza. Vettel would end up having to settle for third place while Kimi Raikkonen once again finishes in second place. Again you could argue maybe Ferrari would swap the cars but looking at how they actually finished the gap between the Ferraris was like 17 seconds. It's getting they might have, they might have not, I, I just, I don't know. Now it's off to the Malaysia for the Malaysian Grand Prix. Max Verstappen would claim pole position, but the race start is where things are a little bit interesting because Sebastian Vettel probably would not DNF in this race like he actually did because Nico Rosberg isn't there for him to collide with. So then you're in a situation where Vettel is still up there in the race. However, I do think it still would have been a Red Bull 1-2 like it actually was. Daniel Ricciardo taking the race victory ahead of Max Verstappen, settling for second place because, well, Ricciardo was ahead of him and probably team orders as well. But either way, I think Sebastian Vettel would end up rounding off the podium in third place as opposed to retiring from the race. Oh, and I totally didn't forget to mention at Spa that Rio Harianto is no longer on the grid and Esteban Ocon has joined the grid with Manor. Totally did not forget to mention that. And now we take a trip over to Suzuka for the Japanese Grand Prix where Kimi Raikkonen finds himself going quickest in qualifying. However, he does end up with a grid penalty which hands pole position to his teammate Sebastian Vettel who does not have a grid penalty here because there was no collision in Malaysia 
procedure for him to be penalized for. Max Verstappen would have been alongside him on the starting grid, and well, in the actual Japanese Grand Prix, he was the highest finishing non-Mercedes driver, and I'm just gonna run with the assumption that he still would have been the highest finishing non-Mercedes driver ahead of Sebastian Vettel, finishing off behind him in second place, and then Kimi Raikkonen rounds off the podium in third place, coming back after that penalty to get a podium finish, so a good, decent race for him. He finishes up ahead of Daniel Ricciardo, who isn't that far away from the championship, but his sights will be firmly set on the US Grand Prix at Austin, Texas for round 18 to have a good performance there. Daniel Ricciardo does end up starting off the weekend very, very nicely with pole position for the Grand Prix, and that pole position gets turned into a race victory from ahead of his main rival, and really only rival now, Sebastian Vettel, in second place, while it's a return to the podium for Fernando Alonso. Fernando Alonso getting some good out of his McLaren Honda to claim the final step on the podium this time out. But after round 18, let's now look at the driver's championship. Daniel Ricciardo can wrap up the championship at the next race. The gap is 48 points between Daniel Ricciardo on 320 points and Sebastian Vettel on 272. He can, if the gap is over 50 points after the Mexican Grand Prix, Daniel Ricciardo will be world champion. Third place is currently still Kimi Raikkonen on 233 points, but it's only 11 points back further than that is Max Verstappen on 222. So we have the battle for the fleet of the championship, then we have the battle for, for third place in the championship, and then the top five is being rounded off by, by Sergio Perez on 129 points, level pegging with Valtteri Bottas on 129 points also. Seventh place, you'll find Nico Hülkenberg still on 92 points, while eighth place is at 89 points, going the way of Felipe Massa. Ninth is 10 points back from that and with Fernando Alonso. Then there's only eight points further back to Carlos Sainz on 71 points, rounding off the top 10. Constructors Championship and Red Bull have pulled quite a bit of a gap ahead of Ferrari on 546 points against Ferrari's 505. It's a massive gap back to Force India, who are now claiming third spot in the championship on 221. The battle for third here still raging on as Williams are only a few points behind them on 218. 125 points are going the way of McLaren now in fifth place, while Toro also has slipped back towards the sixth place on 109 points. Then behind them it's still the same driver, it's, 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 then behind them it's still the same teams in the same places. Seventh is Haas on 62 points, eighth is Ryan on 21, ninth is Manor on four, and then Sauber are on two points in tenth place. But now let's head on to the Mexican Grand Prix race where as I said Daniel Ricciardo can wrap up the drivers championship as long as the gap to Vettel is over 50 points after this race. It ends up being his teammate Max Verstappen claiming pole position for this Grand Prix and of course at the end of the race it was a little bit messy toward it one way between Verstappen and, Re and Vettel and Ricciardo. I'd imagine that would still end up happening. Of course, if you recall it, they crossed the line in the order of Verstappen, Vettel, Ricciardo, one, two, three. However, Verstappen got a penalty and got, got chucked off the podium. He would not get chucked off the podium here, but Vettel also ended up getting a penalty post race. And so after penalties dished out, I'm assuming all of that would still happen. It ends up being Daniel Ricciardo taking the race victory while Verstappen second on for Red Bull 1-2 and Sebastian Vettel 3rd and that means that's the championship. Daniel Ricciardo with two races to spare is world champion in Formula 1 for the first time. Wrapping it up a few races early but he'll be very happy with that because now Red Bull can focus solely on the Constructors' Championship which they can wrap up at this very next race in Brazil. Again, if the gap to Ferrari is 43 points or more after this race, they can do that at the Brazilian Grand Prix. But it ends up being Kimi Raikkonen claiming pole position but he, of course, ends up falling victim to the very tricky conditions that race day in Brazil ended up offering up. But Max Verstappen takes full advantage of the conditions. He masters the wet conditions to go on to take a race victory while his teammate finishes down in P6. But that's enough points. Those 33 points are enough for Red Bull to clinch the Constructors' Championship for the fifth time. They've wrapped them both up early, which means the last race is really, well, shits and giggles, really. But the podium ends up being rounded off by Sergio Perez in second and Sebastian Vettel in third place. In terms of the championship, there's a few places that are confirmed, a few places still unconfirmed. The top two places are confirmed in the championship, with Daniel Ricciardo 553 points and Sebastian Vettel 302. The battle for third is still ongoing, however. Max Verstappen now finds himself in third on 265 points, while Kimi Raikkonen is 20 points back from that on 245. 20-point gap, not impossible, but it'll be difficult for Raikkonen to overturn. Elsewhere, Sergio Perez is currently on 151 points in fifth place. He's not got a massive gap back to 
to Valtteri Bottas on 139. It would be difficult for Bottas to overturn, but it's not impossible. Nico Hülkenberg is more or less confirmed in seventh place, but Felipe Massa is still there, but his more realistic battle will be with Fernando Alonso, whose more re most realistic battle will be with Carlos Sainz, as they're currently level on 83 points. In terms of the Constructors' Championship, the top two are confirmed at Red Bull and Ferrari. Red Bull, 622 points. They are champions. Ferrari have to sell for second on 547. Force India are still not completely out of the woods from Williams. 263 points and plays 234, but it'll be difficult for Williams to overturn. McLaren are still have an ongoing battle with Toro Rosso. 130 points plays 121. Meanwhile, Haas are basically confirmed in seventh place on 62 points. And then there's the bottom of the field with Renault in eighth on 21 points. Sauber are back up to ninth on 10 points and then Manor have five points. After Esteban Alcon scored his first points in Formula One at the Brazilian Grand Prix. But now let's head on to the final race of the season, the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. For the top guys, it's really just shits and giggles, and Daniel Ricciardo ends up taking pole position for this Grand Prix. It does not turn into a race win. That ends up going with the way of Sebastian Vettel, who makes a very strong end to the season with a race victory. Max Verstappen rounds off the podium in second place, which is enough for him to clinch third place in the Drivers' Championship, while Daniel Ricciardo rounds off the podium in third place. Elsewhere with the Perez Bottas battle, Perez ends up holding on to come out on top in that battle with his sixth place finish. And in the Alonso Sainz battle, Alonso's finish in eighth place in this race is enough for him to clinch ninth place in the championship while Carlos Sainz ends up retiring from this final race of the season. But now here's your final standing. Daniel Ricciardo is your champion of 2016 without Mercedes on 368 points. He is ahead of Sebastian Vettel rounding off the second place spot on 327 points. Max Verstappen in the second Red Bull car, he's finished with off the top three on 283 points. Being out Kimi Raikkonen who has a sell for fourth on 257 points. Sergio Perez is the last person in the top five on 159 points. He beat out Valtteri Bottas to that fifth place spot who sits in sixth place on 139 points. Nico Hülkenberg is up next for Force India on 122 points while Felipe Massa just broke over 100 points on 101 points. Fernando Alonso beat out his fellow countryman Carlos Sainz to ninth place. He's on 87 points, while Carlos Sainz has to settle for 10th place, the last car in the top 10 on 83 points. Roman Grosjean is the first man outside the top 10 on 55 points, while Jensen Button in his last full season of Formula 1, not his last race, but his last full season, ends up in 12th place on 43 points. Danny Kvyat is only one point behind him on 42 points. He's ahead of Kevin Magnussen, who finds himself in 14th place on 18 points. Esteban Gutierrez is in 15th on 10 points, while Felipe Nazar managed to score 7 points in his car. He is in 16th place. One point ahead of Julian Palmer in 17th place on 6 points. And then you have Pascal Varline and Gustavo Van Dorn tie on 4 points in 18th and 19th. But Varline gets ahead on count back of other positions. Marcus Ericsson is 1 point back from that in 20th on 3 points. While Esteban Ocon is the last of the point scorers on 1 point And Rio Harriando scored nothing. And now for the Constructors' Championship standings. Red Bull Racing are the Constructors' Champions of this season. When you take Mercedes out of things on 655 points for the Austrian-based of the built the Austrian licensed Milton Keynes based teams. Ferrari are gonna have to sell for second on 584 points while Force India round off the top three after a strong season for the team on 281 points. Williams find themselves finishing in fourth place on 240 points while McLaren round off the top five on 134 points. Toro Rosso are in sixth place just behind them on 121 while Haas are the first team to not get over 100 points this season in seventh place on 65 points. Renault did not have a brilliant season there in eighth place on on 24 points, while Sauber beat out Manor to 10th to 9th place rather on 10 points, while Manor have to sell for 10th, also known as last, on 5 points. And 2016 without Mercedes is at its end. That's what would have happened. It would have ended in a Red Bull Championship. It would have ended in a Daniel Ricciardo Championship. That's what would have happened. Up next, 2014 or 2015 without Mercedes. I haven't, uh, 2014 I definitely will be doing, I think. 2015 I haven't quite decided yet. I'm gonna look at it and, and then see. So let me know if thoughts to do in the comments below. Drop a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe if you're new around here. Thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.